Hey guys, let's talk about summer research. I promised you in the last video that I will be talking more about uh, what my summer research is going to look like and uh, it has changed a bit since uh, I last posted an update on this. I had to switch labs and the reason is, well, COVID because uh, there's two main reasons. One is that university is doing a lot of renovations this summer. It's taking advantage of the fact that there is literally almost no one on campus. So it's it's reasonable to do all kinds of renovations that, that they can. And that's what's happening in our department specifically. And in the lab that I was supposed to work, it's scheduled to be extensively renovated. And that means that for a while, we wouldn't be able to access the lab and do our work. And uh, this is a very hands-on type of setting where you have to be in the laboratory to do any kind of learning, to make progress, to do something. So this is the first reason we can do that, at least for some period of time. And another reason being that I was supposed to work on one of the projects um, that involves physics and biology collaboration and the student, the grad student I was supposed to work with works in the biology lab most of the time and our biology department is much more strict when it comes to COVID rules and with how the things look right now it doesn't seem like in the summer there will be very much change from what's happening right now because we have pretty strict rules when it comes to social distancing and things like that. I was just warned that it might be the case that the research won't be able to um, happen in the way that it was supposed to happen initially. I was advised to look around and ask around for um, other opportunities, uh, either just in case or to actually change labs. Again, for those two reasons. So I started asking around and luckily one of the professors offered me to work on a project with one of his grad students. It's still solid state physics and it also involves nanomagnetism, but it's much more computational in nature. So it's not really a hands-on thing in the lab. It's purely computational research. So I'll be working on the artificial spin eyes. This topic and this term in general is very new to me. I've never heard about this before. In fact, even studying for almost four years now, I only learned about this when I was forced to look for another lab. And actually, I'm so glad I did because this is a very fascinating topic. This is indeed something I would enjoy working on. And I particularly like that it involves a lot of computational work because that will provide me with such valuable skills when it comes to learning programming, scientific programming in particular. So I think either way, regardless what I decide to do after that summer research, this will be very, very beneficial for me to have that done. And the programming language I'll be using to work on that project is Julia. I'm very excited about this project. Uh, I'm very excited to start working on this. And uh, in a minute, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh, what the artificial spin ice is as far as I understand it. So what is artificial spin eyes? It's a relatively new area of research. It has no direct applications just yet, as far as I'm uh, informed, but it's indeed very exciting. Artificial spin eyes are basically tiny nanomagnets arranged in a special way on lattices, like periodic lattices or non-periodic lattices. So the arrangements of those tiny, tiny magnets can be done in a way that they either form a thin layers or actually like full crystals. Again, that's the best to my knowledge at this point. I don't know a whole lot about this just yet. I just read a few papers on that. And so there are endless possibilities for geometries of those arrangements. So you can create pretty unique materials with this. You can try and um, get very specific properties and that's why these materials are called metamaterials or magnetic metamaterials. It's because they are engineered in a special way and not naturally occurring in nature. One aspect of this is that I found particularly interesting is that there are talks of the emerging uh, magnetic monopoles, which, as we know, are non-existent uh, in nature. So this is pretty interesting that we can talk about the emergent monopole properties uh, for the magnets, for those tiny nanomagnets. Um, that's very cool. And another very cool feature of this, which particularly fascinates me, that uh, apparently you can program 
those crystals. You can somehow, if I understand this correctly, you can write a program to be able to control it because those crystals, they do respond to changes in external magnetic fields. You can put current through it, you can create different states of materials with it. And I guess there are ways to do it programmatically somehow. I'm not sure what the exact mechanism would be. So I guess that will be a really interesting topic to discuss later. So artificial spin ices are being extensively studied for uh, their uh, uses and applications in uh, fields such as um, data encryption, data storage, computing, creating programmable or reconfigurable microwave circuits. And I think this is one of the areas that has uh, seen the most advances lately. So this is a um, very brief overview of what my research is going to look like. Lots of programming using Julia and some Lua. So there's been also um, a discussion about using Lua um, along with Julia. I'm not sure exactly why, because Lua is a relatively new language as well, and as far as I know it's being used in image processing, uh, game development, so maybe it has its uses for simulation part, where you have to do some modeling and simulation, maybe it can come in very handy. Yeah, so there is a lot to discuss, there is a lot to talk about here, definitely stay tuned for that. I also decided to use that opportunity and I brought back to life my old blog. It was sitting untouched for a year, two maybe, I, I created it, I didn't use it for anything, I just didn't know what to write about. So now that I have a very specific topic, I'm very interested in that. I think it will be a fun project to do. Keep a logbook of all my progress and what I've learned and kind of share my knowledge with the world, with people who like to learn about this more. I decided to keep that blog alive. I took half of the day yesterday to change it up a little, so it's ready to go. I uh, will link down below in the description to it. It has also a link to it from my main page, uh, main YouTube page on the um, banner on the right bottom corner. And also uh, my Instagram account um, links to it from the bio. If you want, you can go and check it out. It's pretty empty right now, it has just one post, which probably I will need to rewrite. But I think I've set it up the way that I like so far. I didn't want to load it up with too many features, it's just a basic kind of newspaper style blog. So if you've got any specific questions about this research that I'll be starting, uh, drop them in the comments below and I'll get to them in the next videos. And for now I say bye, have a wonderful day guys, and I see you!